everybody. Welcome back to Words with Wayman. I am your host, as always, Matt Wayman. Uh, follow us online at Words with Wayman on Twitter, Words with Wayman on Facebook. We're going to hop right in, y'all. A very special episode with a jeweler, a yoga teacher, my fiance, Haley Cassidy, everybody. Welcome, Haley. Hi. Hi. <laughs> So you've you've been forced to listen to several of these podcasts at different points during your life, so you kind of know how it goes. Um, so I basically just start at the beginning. Where where were you born? Um, I was born in Iowa, in a really small town. Um, my parents lived there for work, mm. and then that's probably the only reason you stay in <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> and then we moved to uh, Hannibal, Missouri, which I consider. To be my hometown. Yeah, and Mark Twain's hometown, as a matter of fact. Claim to fame. Um, really, really cool town. Uh, when did you guys move out of Iowa? Uh, I was only two years old, so I was really two, little. I don't yeah. really remember Iowa. Probably for the Probably for the best. My dad told me never to admit to anyone. That <laughs> Which I, I think is a funny thing Iowa. for him to say. <laughs> Not that Iowa's a terrible state or anything. It was just kind of, uh, I feel like it gets a bad rap for being bleak. Um, but so then you moved out to Hannibal, went to went to school and everything in Hannibal. Yep. Mm-hmm. You have a uh, big portion of your family that lives in Hannibal as well. Whole family. Yep. It's one of those towns that I feel like um, people either leave and leave forever, or they never leave and mm-hmm. they just stay there and they marry somebody that they went to high school with. And yeah. Have kids and which we not see. Not that that's a bad thing. No. It's just Whatever, whatever you choose. Yeah, it's a different path, as different they say. Paths, it. Different yeah. choose, choose your own future, <laughs> basically. Um, you come from a pretty creative family, which I'm sure has some uh, something to do with you know being a jeweler. Now, um, your uncle is a really big potter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my uncle's a potter. He's always done it for um, for his his main gig. So mm-hmm. he, I grew up going to art shows to, yeah. s- to see his stuff and that just being like a really normal thing um to have you know somebody they did a lot of different ventures like um they opened up a coffee shop in downtown mm-hmm. Hamble, yeah java drive really well. still there yeah and um but yeah they've always they've always gone that creative path so i would say that's definitely what inspired me to to find something creative to mm-hmm. do and your aunt she's an artist too she uh does some stuff um we got a couple of her paintings in our house um up here but uh so what did you do for how was grade school in Hannibal um it was really small you know you didn't realize how small it was um there were a few different grade schools that you could go to but we went to the one that was downtown which was Mm -hmm. like a little rough around the edges I think that that I think that that makes for an interesting um way to grow up you know yeah more culture yeah. was the other school closer and you they just decided to go to the other one or? there were like school districts so mm-hmm. it depended on where you lived and we just lived close to downtown mm-hmm. um so that's the school district that we were in and there was no like switching it not that we ever tried to but yeah but that's where that's where i went and that's where my family went like everyone lived downtown and like cool old yeah houses. super cool architecture and handleable that's for sure um, yeah, what, so there was just two grade schools then? There were like four actually. There's, a, there's about 18,000 people in Hannibal. It's a pretty small town, but, um, it's, it's still like a, it's like a small city. I tell people mm-hmm. instead of a small town because they've got like, they've got some things. There's yeah, definitely. some bars and yeah, there's a lot going on there. Yeah. People. Um, and then you went to the high school, which is a, it's one of the cool, it's, the high school looks so cool. It looks like out of mm-hmm. like days and confused or like out of one of those movies. Um, but that, I mean, just, uh, what, what was your graduating class in high school? We, our graduating class was actually like 250, which I feel like is That's pretty, pretty big. normal, that was like but my high it was school. the only high school in, mm-hmm. um, the whole city. So that's, you know, you, everyone went to different grade schools and then when it was time to go to middle school and high school, like everyone sort of came together. So it was wow. like this whole sort of shock of yeah. like, you're used to all these kids and you have your group of friends and then you get thrown into like all these other kids from different classes Mm -hmm. and and everything else so it it was it was still yeah that lived (laughs) lived around you for all that time but you probably hadn't even known right right um because yeah the only i remember a lot of times the only people we knew that went to other schools were if they lived close to us or if they were like cousins and stuff like that yeah um 
How was that high school? It seemed like it'd be pretty cool. That high school was really cool. We, it was like, I don't know if it's still like this, but it was pretty relaxed. Like when you were a junior or a senior, you spent most of your days away from the high school. Drinking. Just, well, <laughs> not drinking, but <laughs> having some fun in other ways. <laughs> well, getting high, you can say that. Yeah. Yeah, smoking high. weed. Smoking weed and just like taking, you know, Take I the just, pills. <laughs> no. I, I'm really shocked looking back at how much freedom we did have mm-hmm. that we could just leave school and smoke and go eat at restaurants and then go back to school. I don't. Was I, that just like lunches? Like you get like an hour for lunch or something? Yeah, we got an hour for lunch. That's and then long if you had um, like your service in action, which was when you like went to schools and like worked with teachers and kids and stuff, yeah. if you had that after then you had like an extra like hour or something. I don't know how it worked out. Oh, really? But you didn't really have to do that much for service in action? No, it was pretty relaxed back then. I really doubt it's, I bet they've... (laughs) Cracked down on it. I bet they've tightened the reins a little bit there, yeah. That's cool. I mean, I'm sure you guys had a lot more fun that way. Yeah. And plus you guys get to hang out at your cousin's house too. I remember too, like everybody smokes cigarettes and like you could do it right outside of the cafeteria, which I feel like that's not a thing. No, anymore. I'm sure that's not a thing. So, and they never checked to see, to make sure that the kids were like 18. Cause there's not that many 18 year olds that are in high yeah. school. So I feel like that's definitely not allowed anymore. That's wild. <laughs> they definitely didn't allow that at our school. By any means, I mean, kids would smoke in the parking lot. I feel like sometimes, but never. Yeah. This was just like a normal, there was like a student smoking area. <laughs> 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 that's the funniest thing I've heard. Uh, that's crazy. Just yeah, I'm uh, sharing a smoke with a cigarette. You could do I mean, like you could do that in college. I mean, hanging outside, but I mean, everybody was 18. Yeah, but everybody, yeah, like you said, everybody was 18. So that's crazy. Did you play sports or anything? Yeah, I played volleyball all through um, through middle school mm-hmm. and uh, the first couple years of high school until that smoke and weed thing set in. Yeah, I tell you. And then I stopped. So and I, no thanks. No, thank you. Swam for a little bit, right? Swam. I was on the swim team for a while. Yep. Then said nope. And said nope. Yep. <laughs> I didn't like. I didn't like the whole. I'm not a very competitive person, so yeah. I didn't like the whole competitive aspect. Swimming of Swimming super competitive. Yeah, swimming is really intense, and like just like all of the politics that come along with sports, it just wasn't my mm-hmm. wasn't my thing. Yeah. No, that's Too definitely, much pressure. It is a lot of pressure for something that doesn't necessarily even really matter that much. Yeah. But everybody just thinks it matters that And much. the parents. parents like the small worst. town, small town parents. But oh, I'm God, sure it's like yeah. that in the city too. I'm oh, sure yeah. I saw that, but. I reffed for a while. Parents just get really involved sometimes like I think a little too much. And Well, they were shitty athletes and they want their kids to be good <laughs> athletes because they were terrible. And yeah, It was always rough dealing with dealing with other people's parents my parents never cared that much yeah. i mean not that they weren't good parents in yeah the game, but they just like never got involved in yeah it was never the crazy i mean right, people yeah. just make themselves look like terrible at stuff like that is basically what it is it's mm-hmm. just you embarrassing yourself in front of 200 other parents yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and kids and other adults and it's just a rough getting thrown out of a seventh grade (laughs) basketball game at 9 a.m on a sunday it's like yeah people are gonna start talking and it's a small town um so everybody would know about that by lunchtime if if that had happened yeah everybody knows everybody's business (laughs) (laughs) so then you're like uh graduated in the high school and what'd you do after that uh my parents talked me into doing the like um a plus program, which is mm-hmm. where you can go to school for free for a couple of years, like right mm-hmm. after. Nice. And stayed in Hannibal. Yeah. Um, but that only lasted about a year, and then I just wanted to get out really bad, so yeah. I moved where everyone from Hannibal moves, which is Columbia, Missouri. Columbia, Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> and went to Mizzou. Nice. Which was awesome. I mm-hmm. love Columbia. I think that. Did you really spend some time in Kirksville at all? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I spent some time. I guess that's right. I went to um, after. The year in Hannibal, I spent some time in Kirksville at Community College there. Yeah. As well, well your was, cousin lived down there and you're... Yeah, I was able to like live with my aunt. Yeah. But Kirksville, turns out, is even worse than Hannibal. Yeah, really? Just like... It's even a really big straight edge school. So like oh, I didn't a know lot that. of um, kids that you would be like, oh, like they seem cool. And then they would have like the excess. Not that they weren't cool. But yeah. they just like didn't, you know... Like to party? Yeah. 
they didn't like to have that much fun. Right? Yeah, which I think is pretty much what college is about, especially for when you're that young. Yeah. So you said, uh, uh-uh, Columbia it is. Yeah. So moved to Columbia after that, which which turned out to be the right decision. Mm-hmm. Um, I ended up working at this music venue as a bartender that, like, really, as silly yeah. as it sounds, like, really changed my life and sort of like enhanced. Um, my personality and like everything yeah. that I wanted wanted to be and yeah. wanted to hanging out with a super uh, huge group of creative yes, people. It's called like it the it's not there anymore, but it was called the Blue Fugue in Columbia, Missouri. For any people out there that are listening in Missouri, um, that's where we met. That's where we met. Yeah. So yeah. So mm-hmm. I just like through a mutual friend. And then I was surrounded by so many creative people. So many super super drunk creative <laughs> people. <laughs> That it just like forces you to like find your thing, you mm-hmm. know, yeah. like, what you want to do. That you went through creative. a couple. You're playing drums and stuff down there. Yeah, I, I, it took me a while to find it. I played drums for a while. Played I, bass, guitar and bass. Yep, yeah, and was in a, um, did a short stint in a, an all girl band called uh, <laughs> uh, the Debbie Dads. Mm-hmm. So that yeah. had three guys in it, I believe. <laughs> right, it was an all girl band. The only all girl band that had two dudes in it. We no. We <laughs> no dudes in that one <laughs> that was a different band called the greatest hits the great yeah that was <laughs> a different band, the greatest hits that's that was pretty funny um but then you're like music isn't it music wasn't it i just couldn't i couldn't um i couldn't stick with it music is something that you have to be incredibly mo- motivated and mm-hmm. practice all the time and it just wasn't it just wasn't my thing and um and then i moved on to i went to my first yoga class yeah in columbia and that your friend was teaching. Mm-hmm. Yep. And just sort of became obsessed with that for a while and decided that that's what I wanted to do. So Yeah. And then you went to yoga school and got certified and everything. Went to yoga school in California. That was really cool. It was my first trip to California and mm-hmm. I was all on my own. Um, Independent stayed, woman. Stayed in the mountains for like mm-hmm. 30 days with um, with 30 other people from all, from all over the world, yeah. really. Yeah. And it was this complete like immersion experience where you're just like living in a yurt and having these awesome like vegetarian meals cooked for you every day, which I've, I wasn't a vegetarian, so it was a mm-hmm. bit rough. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was really cool. And then I came out of that a teacher and and continued to, to teach in Columbia for a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, this woman sort of took me under her wing that owned a studio in... It's still there. Um, Columbia, that's still there, called yep. Yoga Soul. Yeah, super this beautiful woman, studio. Polly, yeah, mm-hmm. she's she's just one of the most amazing people I've yeah. ever met in my she life. She gets it. And um, she but wants yeah, to. she really she really influenced me a lot and um, taught there until you and I left Columbia. Mm-hmm. And then moved down to New Orleans, where you taught for pretty much the whole time we were down there. Yep. Mm-hmm. Full time for a long time managing the studio. Ended up managing the studio that was sort of up and coming in New Orleans called Rain Studios. That's mm-hmm. um, just amazing. It's in this old warehouse. Oh, yeah. It's a really beautiful space. And um, again, like sort of got lucky there and had some people really influence me a lot there and mm-hmm. help me grow as a teacher and mm-hmm. learned a lot about managing other human beings which is not my thing the at worst all. it's the worst part about yeah. business <laughs> i'm way i'm way too passive to like yeah crack the whip yeah can't do that yeah that is kind of probably the, the the i think the part that everybody feels like they want to get into management but don't realize the biggest downfall is that you have to manage people yeah it's, yeah that's the worst part about mm-hmm. Just doing the ordering and stuff is all one thing. But yeah, I can into. handle that. I can handle like the being organized mm-hmm. and having to keep on task. But as far as like telling other people what to do and and discipline at all is just not. I can't handle it. Mm-hmm. Um, but so I, yeah, you got out of that shortly after we moved to or uh, right yeah right as we moved out of there and then came up to. Denver. Well, yeah, and I mean, touching back on New Orleans, I think that that New Orleans is an amazing place oh, yeah. for to it sort of breeds creativity. Mm-hmm. Totally and does. It definitely encourages you to be creative, and you can draw a lot of inspiration from that yeah. city. There's um, pretty stuff everywhere. Yeah, and the architecture everywhere. and the culture, and just like mm-hmm. the history, and it's There's a lot of art. A kind. There's like a lot of art. And yeah, everything's painted fun, and mm-hmm. the people are super cool music yep. everywhere all the time yeah you're encouraged to be to be creative there mm-hmm. and if you're not creative you're Kinda in the minority like you know yeah. 
So, um, and people are doing crazy things there that, that I had never seen before. New Orleans was the first place I lived outside of Missouri. And mm-hmm. so it was sort of culture shock getting there. Um, but man, if you want to move somewhere and just immediately be accepted. Oh yeah. That's the place to oh, go. Oh, we got picked up right away by some people that just really helped us out and still, I mean, whenever we go down there, we still stay with those people. And yeah. It's just such a, such a cool, unique. Cool town. City. Like people are, I mean, it is a big tourist town, so it's like everybody is nice to the tourists and it's just like a town where everybody's happy a lot of the time. Yeah. Like. But there's something to be said about like living as a local there and seeing seeing how the locals live. Oh yeah. There's definitely a big, some sadness down that city as well. Yeah. And we see it every time we go back, but we also have a blast every time we go back. And I've had a blast doing this part one. That's as quick as these things go. Uh, very fast. Just before we get out of here, give them uh, the way that they can find you online and all that stuff. Um, my jewelry, my, the company is called ornate chaos. Um, the website is just ornate chaos.com. And then I have an Instagram and it's just ornate chaos jewelry. So give me a, give me a follow. Yeah. Everybody check her out on the interwebs, everybody. Um, support us online at words with Wayman on Twitter, words with Wayman on Facebook. Uh, this has been part one with Haley Cassie. We'll be right back with part two.